Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about tracking of the blade on woodland mill sawmills. And uh, I know a, a lot of you woodland mills owners participate in their uh, Facebook community and recently there have been loads and loads of posts with new sawmill owners having problems with the blade popping off. And um, you know, when we can get to the bottom of it, it's almost always user error, but uh, there's a lot of there's a lot to tracking and I thought it'd be worth talking about this in a video and going into detail and um, Help people understand what what happens with these mills uh, The first thing I want to talk about are some common mistakes I think one of the the biggest ones I'm seeing now is where people assume that when they take the sawmill out of the box and set it up and put the saw head on the track that they can just start the engine and immediately be begin sawing and and uh that you know people assume that this this is ready to saw out of the box and that is absolutely not the case these mills come shipped with a blade on the wheels and the blade is tightened up enough so that it doesn't fall off in shipping but by no means uh does that suggest that that blade has been tensioned properly or tracked properly so you know, mistake number one, do not assume that the mill is ready to saw out of the box. Um, go through the instructions in the owner's manual. They're going to have a whole section about tension and tracking. Make sure you go through that carefully. Uh, second mistake I think seems to be common is people will go through tension and tracking um, and they'll put a log on the mill. They'll start the engine for the first time, they'll immediately throttle up and throw the blade off. And it's because they're not going through what, what I consider to be probably the most important step of, of, of setting up your sawmill is to do a pre-flight check before you cut any wood, before you even start the motor. And that means every time you come out to use your mill, look over all your wear parts. And, and I don't care if this is a brand new mill that's never been you know, used before, look everything over, make sure the belt's in good shape, the belt's lined up, that the belt's tensioned properly, that the pulleys are all good. Um, you wanna tension, you know, position your blade on the wheels, tension it up, and then spin this by hand, you know, 10, 15 times, whatever it takes. Verify that the blade is tracking and it's not moving backwards or forward on either wheel. Um, and so that's, you know, a lot of people are skipping that step it's it's imp as important when the mill is brand new as it is every time you saw do that very careful pre-flight check then i think the third most common mistake people make and this one is kind of humorous to me um i i like mistakes that are so simple that you can kind of laugh about it and i make tons of those uh so i keep myself pretty entertained with mistakes like that but people use way too much lubricant on their blade when I run lubricant, you can, uh, there's a little flow valve up here on the lube tank that you can adjust to get just the right flow, uh, flow rate so that when you throttle up and it opens that valve and starts dripping on the blade, you can get, you know, the precise amount that you want. When I set mine up, it's generally dripping about once per second, maybe, maybe one and a half times, uh, you know, in a second. It's just, it's a, it's a very noticeable drip, drip, drip. And you see drips of lubricant going down the blade as it's running across. And that has always worked great for me. Um, I've never had issues with sap buildup and I saw a lot of pine. I've never had issues with blades overheating or anything. Um, I've never had issues with blades popping off ever. Um, I think I counted. I'm I'm I, I'm now to using seven blades on this sawmill. I've run them all until they were dull. Not a single one has ever popped off. Um, but some people they'll send so much lube on the blade that it's actually squirting out in a stream. And guess what happens? You know that lube rides rides the blade until it goes around the drive wheel. Um, and it'll make that blade basically just hydroplane right off of the drive wheel. And I've seen some folks post pictures where it's wet even on this side. That All that lubricant's making it all the way around to the follower wheel. So that's common mistake number three. Kind of humorous. Don't use too much lube. You're not trying to wash your blade. Uh, you know, this isn't a car wash. 
you really just want a steady drip, 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 drip on that blade to send some of that lube down through the wood, through the cut. Um, it, the lube really doesn't need to go past the cut. Once you've moved that blade through the wood, through your cant, however wide it is, that's really the only place the lube needs to be working. Past that point, you know, you don't want to be seeing it on your blade, on your belts, inside the case, uh, any, anywhere. So um, it's not a car wash. Don't use too much lubricant. So those are some very common mistakes. Now I want to talk about kind of the details of how uh, bandsaws track. And this could be a regular bandsaw. This could be a sawmill. Uh, I've used dozens of bandsaws over the years, set up many of them. They all kind of behave in the, in the same way. And so in these diagrams, I've, had, I've got a couple different scenarios here. This, you can picture this as kind of a top-down view where you might have the follower wheel, the drive wheel, and then a blade running between them going this way. And so this first set over here, this is what things are supposed to look like when everything is good. Your two wheels are in the same plane. We call that coplanar and they're parallel. They're both aimed the exact same way. And you'll know when you have this because your blade will stay on. You know, it might, it might wobble a little bit front and back, but in general, when you get into this zone, your blade is gonna stay put. And you know, when I run my mill, I might saw for six, seven hours during a day. You know, that's what's happening. I get just really reliable trustworthy blade performance because it stays on and it tracks true the whole whole time um, over here what I've shown is a follower wheel and drive wheel that are no longer coplanar they're out of plane in this case the follower wheel is shifted this way a little bit if you try and run like this well your blades gonna have to steer that way to go between the two wheels and it's going to jump off and then in this last set I show the drive wheel uh, being out of parallel with the follower wheel. It's tipped at an angle, and you know, when, if you try and run like this, your blade's going to want to steer in that direction, and it's going to pop off. And so any mixture of um, out of plane, out of parallel, is going to cause tracking problems. Either one of these will cause a tracking problem. If you have both of them, you know, you're surely going to have a tracking problem. You want these wheels to be in the same plane, pointing in the same direction. And if you can achieve that, you're going to have very reliable performance out of your sawmill and that blade is not going to pop off. Um, one last thing I want to note, you know, I show this angled wheel being out of parallel in, in this direction. This could easily be tipped up or down out of parallel with, with the other wheel. And, you know, that could be just as bad. You know, this, this you know, planar parallelism, that has to happen uh, vertically and horizontally. And um, it, it, it's critical that you check for these things. Now, um, like I said, if you got everything right, the proof of that is going to be great tracking. You'll never have to worry about this. You'll never throw a blade. Another way you can check, though, is to take a straight edge. I'm just using a level here. And you can, uh, you probably need to do this with the blade off, but you can uh, run it across the wheels, top and bottom, and check that they're, you know, fairly lined up. Um, that'll check your, your, your planer requirement. And then if you can do this with a blade under tension and track, then you can check to make sure that the two wheels are, are parallel with each other and one of them is not, you know, cocked off at a different angle. Now, these are cast wheels. This outer surface, is not machined, you know, it's not really meant to be a reference, but if your wheels are grossly out of plane or grossly out of parallel, you'll be able to see that by putting this straight edge across the outside of the wheels. I mean, you should be, you should be really, really darn close when you do this, this simple check. Um, if you wanted to do this in a preci precision way, you'd probably have to make some sort of a jig or fixture that nestles right down into the V groove in the wheel on both sides and can center itself up, you know, on the machine surface of those wheels and then check for those conditions. But, you know, just as a quick eyeball check, 
you know, r run a straight edge and, and, and verify, you know, that, that things are pretty close to where they're supposed to be. Okay, so let's talk about how Woodland Mills uh, sets up the tracking on their sawmills, and we're starting over here on the drive side. And the first thing in the notice is this pretty uh, obnoxious sticker saying, you know, factory set, do not adjust tracking. And uh, for most of us, you know, we're gonna look at that and think, okay, I'm not gonna mess with this. Um, and in my case, you know, I haven't had to mess with these settings at all. My mill's been tracking perfectly since I got it. Um, but I thought it'd be good to talk about how this side works, even though we're not supposed to touch it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's not black, but it's kind of a black box because because there's no instructions for the side on the newer mills. But if you look at the exploded parts drawings at Woodland Mills uh, includes with their owner's manual, uh, it's pretty easy to figure out how this is going to work. And so uh, first, there are two bol bolts, top and bottom. And these are going to basically pinch uh, the tail end of the axle shaft mount for that drive wheel. And by moving these bolts, you're going to be able to move that shaft tail up or down. And that's going to really control the uh, vertical tilt of the uh, drive wheel. And then there's a horizontal bolt that goes all the way through with, with some nuts on it. Uh, by the way, you would have to loosen this up in order to make that vertical adjustment. There's actually a slot in here that this moves up and down in. Um, but this can be used to adjust the horizontal tilt of the drive wheel um, by changing the position of these nuts and moving that bolt um, from side to side. That's going to adjust the, the horizontal tilt. And so we have basically two adjustments over here on the drive side, uh, a, a vertical tilt and a horizontal tilt, okay? And again, you know, generally the customer should not uh, need to mess with these. Um, if you've tried everything else and you still can't get your sawmill to track right, then I'd recommend you contact Woodland Mills Tech Support. They're gonna ask you some questions to help diagnose the problem. You know, maybe you can combine that with uh, the straight edge test I mentioned uh, just a little bit ago and uh, be able to diagnose and, and you know know for sure that yeah I've tried everything else and this is where I need to make a, a change so again last resort but if you go into this you know do it with with tech support and uh, with some other information and so now let's move over to the follower side and this is really the the primary place that the customer is meant to be adjusting uh, tracking on on their sawmills here we have the tail of the follower wheel axle uh, mount that's basically being pinched between these two bolts and by loosening and tightening in alternate fashion these bolts you'll be able to move this tail side to side and that's going to control the side to side tilt of the follower wheel okay and that's that's mainly what they want the customer to be doing it's kind of like a fine tuning of your uh, tracking adjustment on the follower side only. And um, so one thing you might notice, we've talked about the drive side, it has vertical and horizontal tilt. We've talked about the follower side, which has horizontal tilt. Neither of these wheels has an adjustment for the planarity uh, of the drive wheel and the follower wheel. And the best I can figure is that, you know, Woodland Mills figures, since they're both mounted on a basically continuous box beam that goes away, all the way across, uh, that they don't need that adjustment, that within whatever tolerance they can manufacture with this box beam, that they're comfortable with the fact that the wheels are going to be uh, pretty much cold planar. So they do not have a dedicated adjustment for planarity. They really just have the vertical and horizontal tilt adjustments on the drive wheel, and then this horizontal tilt adjustment on the follower wheel. Okay, so back on this side, looking at our two wheels, again, we have a vertical and horizontal tilt adjustment factory set on that drive wheel, and then a horizontal tilt adjustment only on the follower wheel. And um, 
what I'm assuming happens at the factory is they'll have some sort of fixture or jig that they can run between these two pulleys and uh, to track and align them. Because only this wheel, the drive wheel, has that vertical adjustment, um, they're basically going to probably uh, set that one so that it matches the vertical tilt of this wheel, whatever it is. I mean, that one can't change, so that's going to dictate what the vertical tilt needs to be. Uh, and then they will probably use horizontal tilt over here to make sure that the belt is lining up properly with the clutch. I know they can move the engine also on the mounts if they need to shift the, the clutch pulley, but you know there, there's going to be a, a process that they would use knowing that two of the adjustments are over on the drive side, only one of them's over here. And uh, you know after they do their thing at the factory, you know they ship the middle off and then it comes to the customer and you know they ask the customer as part of the setup, and tensioning process to check the tracking over here on the follower wheel. And this is not really a difficult process at all. Um, I, I did it through trial and error basically, and it went, went pretty quickly. What I did was I put a blade on, and then I spun this by hand uh, five or six times, and I watched what the blade did, you know, whether it came forward or, or came uh, or went backward. And then I took the tension off and came back here and made small adjustments to these bolts and i'm talking about quarter turn to a half a turn at the most you want to do this in very very small steps then i tension it back up um, come back around spin the wheel again uh, see what changed and then go back and make a, a final adjustment i think i only had to go through that maybe twice to get it really right on the money um, and it tracked great for months. Uh, I think I went through six or seven blades, never had any issues at all. Uh, everything worked great. And then we got into warmer weather and um, you know I came out to saw one day when it was in the 90s uh, Fahrenheit and did my pre-flight check, spun things and I noticed the blade wanted to go back. And so I'm like, huh, well, you know, we did have a big change in temperature between the last time I set tracking, which is in the winter. And so I uh, went over to the backside again. Um, in, in this case, the blade was um, uh, moving back. And so um, I did the opposite here. I, I moved this uh, tail shaft uh, that way. And again, it was a quarter turn, a very, very small amount, snug the, the bolts back up. Came around here, tensioned up, spun it by hand, and it was just perfect. And so that's a pretty small adjustment, but, uh, you know, it, it showed to me that, yeah, things will change seasonally. This is a, a metal machine. You know, stuff changes with, with temperature swings, and and uh, so I did need to retrack this uh, one time. And it, that's the kind of thing you want to pick up in your pre-flight check. You, you know, that's why it's important to check the mill every time you saw uh, regardless of whether or not it worked perfectly last time, you want to check it prior to sawing again, just in case you need these uh, minor tracking adjustments. Uh, one last thing I want to mention about this system. Uh, they've got a nice system, I think better than some sawmill brands, where uh, the tension adjustment is pretty much independent of the tracking adjustment. And that means if you put on a new blade... Um, you know, you always loosen up the tension after you're done sawing so you don't put flat spots in your belts and you take the load off everything. Then you, you tension it back up. But because the tracking and the tension is independent, you really don't need to retrack this uh, at all. You know, when you change blades, when you retension the, the, the mill, this, this should be something, you know, maybe you change seasonally, but that's it. And, and that's a nice setup. Other sawmills, tracking and tension are dependent on each other and um, it can be a little bit of a struggle to get those right uh, but here we have an independent system and it works very well for the most part uh, one upshot of the way this is designed is you know when you make this adjustment here for tracking you're controlling the position of the tail of the axle shaft and that again controls the horizontal tilt of that wheel um, and then when you tension this up, there's springs in here, and when you're tensioning it, um, you're basically pulling that follower wheel this way with spring pressure, but you're pulling against the blade. You know, the blade's a big piece of metal. It actually pulls back that way, 
And so even though you set this tracking here for the tail of the follower wheel, you know, there's a little bit of slop in the bearings of that shaft. Uh, you, these are metal parts that flex just a little bit. And these things change under tension, and that's important to realize. When I made my tracking adjustments, you know, I loosened it up to change this, then I tensioned it back up to check it, and that's, that's what you're doing. You're checking to get it tracked perfectly under tension. Really, the only reason you want to take tension off when you're making adjustments is so you don't wear out the uh, tips of these positioning bolts as they're rubbing on that shaft. But otherwise, the, the important thing is to make sure, you know, it's tracking right under full tension. And what I found is that you can actually use your tension to fine tune your tracking. And, and so when I do my pre-flight check, you know, I'll come around, tension it up, spin the wheel, um, feel back here, there's, there's about, supposed to be about a millimeter overhang of the uh, blade over the edge of the, the pulley there. And, um, you know, if everything's good, it'll stay that way. If it moves just a little bit in or out, I know that I can come over here and tweak this tension setting. And by tweak, I'm talking maybe this much to that much. Okay, like eighth of a turn type of a tweak. That's going to make it just a very, very minor difference in the amount of tension load being pull, uh, placed on the end of that axle shaft. And that's just going to alter the dynamics of the tracking a teeny, teeny little bit. And it's actually going to do that in a much, much finer way, a much finer adjustment than you could probably get with these screws. And so, you know, like one of the last steps in my pre-flight is to tension it up check the tracking, and then use this as kind of my fine-tuned dial to get the tracking exactly perfect. And really in my head, I think what that's doing is it's accounting for changes in temperature, blade stretching, belt wear, all these other little factors that may have changed between now when you're going to start sawing and the last time you set that tracking. And so you can use the tension to, to fine tune that to get that whole balance back to where it was uh, when you made this adjustment. And again, to me, this is a once a year type of adjustment at most, you know, maybe a seasonal thing if you have large temperature swings, but by and large, you know, this, this can be left alone and most of your fine tuning can be done uh, using tension to, to really get that final dial in of, of the, uh, uh, tracking system. So um, I think that's most of the stuff I wanted to cover in this video. I guess one key concept here is that tracking on a bandsaw on a sawmill, it's really a relative thing. It's between those two wheels. It, it almost doesn't matter what, how the wheels are positioned, you know, relative to the earth, relative to your sawmill bed, relative to the sawmill case. What governs tracking and the stability of that blade is you know, the planarity and the parallelism between those two wheels. And that's the main thing to focus on. Really, that's all that matters. It's a very relative thing between the two wheels. And, um, you know, we've got the vertical and horizontal tilt adjustments there, horizontal tilt adjustment there. Between those three adjustments, you should be able to get these tracked so that they're, you know, in very good relative alignment with each other and your blade, blade stays on. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I've gone through a lot of blades on this sawmill. Not a single one of them has popped off. Uh, it just tracks really, really well, runs very smoothly, uh, cuts, cuts nice. And so, uh, you know, I know it's possible to get very reliable operation out of these mills. And so let me recap. If you're having tracking problems, you know, the three most common mistakes are, first, don't assume that this comes out of the box ready to saw. It does not. Make sure you go through the tracking and tension adjustments in the owner's manual and, you know, take your time, get that tracking so that it's right on the money, so that it's very consistent. And that's really going to help a lot of things. Um, number two, every time you saw, before you saw, do that pre-flight check. You know, make sure the tracking is still consistent from the last time you said it. Use the tension adjustment as a fine tuning to to get that back into the zone if it's drifted a little bit. If it's drifted a lot and you know you know hey it's been a seasonal change, well then you might have to retrack it. But 
The important thing is go through your pre-flight check every single time. Spin this up by hand. Don't even start the motor. Don't even start sawing wood until you can spin this by hand, you know, 10 or 20 times and see that it's, you know, rock solid and, and tracking well. And uh, the final thing is, you know, don't use too much lubricant. You're not trying to wash things. It's not a car wash. You just need a drip, you know, steady periodic drip on that blade to keep the blade cool, to cut down on any sap or dust buildup on the blade. Uh, and that's all you, you should need. Don't use too much lubricant because it's going to cause the blade to want to hide your plane off the belt. Whether or not you have your tracking set right, that's going to become a problem. So don't use too much lubricant. Um, and then finally, you know, if you've, you've done all that stuff, you've given you your best effort to track here, um, and it's the blade still coming off, well then it's time to suspect that drive wheel. And so what I would do is get the straight edge or use strings across the top and bottom of these two wheels from, uh, you know, one edge all the way to the far edge on the other wheel. Get an idea, evaluate how are these two wheels aligned to each other in terms of being in the same plane, in terms of being angled and parallel to each other. And uh, the straight edge test or a string test, you know, that's pretty much going to tell you right away what's off and how you need to fix it. If they're off vertically, well, that's going to have to be fixed over here because that's the only place with a vertical adjustment. Um, if it's off horizontally, then you can probably only, uh, only have to work on this side to fix it. Um, I think it would be rare to have to make a horizontal change over here, especially since it's going to mess with alignment with the clutch pulley and you don't want to do that. Regardless, before you dive into uh, any tracking adjustments on the drive wheel, you know, remember this sticker. Yeah, that's a big red sticker, factory set, do not adjust. Before you decide you need to mess with this, you know, please get in touch with Woodland Mills Tech Support, talk to them, explain things to them, give them as much data as you're able to, in terms of maybe what you saw from your straight edge or a string test. Uh, what else you've tried, and they'll be able to talk you through this adjustment the proper way. They'll be able to send you instructions on how to do it, and hopefully, you know, if all else has failed, hopefully this will resolve your problems. So uh, that's it for today. Um, appreciate everyone watching. Uh, please, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below the video. Have a good day.